next category i would like to invite our dean dr varun nagraj to take it forward good evening everybody and welcome for being here and most of all thank you to all of our award winners for taking the time to be here you make us proud and you provide inspiration to the rest of the people in the auditorium that an extraordinary life is possible all right so thank you again please you know so this year we are creating a new category called the distinguished alumni awards 40 years plus of spjmr means 15000 or more folks that have passed through our gates that are out there making a big difference and it's time to recognize a lifetime of achievement for several of our alumni so this is the first year we'll be starting the distinguished alumni award this is for those that have scaled the pinnacle of their chosen professions so we have two winners this year let me briefly mention what categories they fall into and then we will introduce the first and then we will introduce the second one but without giving any names out the two winners are quite different from each other though they are only 3 years apart in terms of when they graduated from spjmr the first has scaled i believe the pinnacle of excellence in corporate india he's on the leadership team of one of india's most admired conglomerates one of the india's top 10 companies in addition to being on that leadership team of that particular company he is the ceo and executive director of their largest group the automotive and farm division the second uh, person that will get this award has scaled the pinnacle of excellence in terms of entrepreneurship they have taken a 10 million dollar investment and converted it into a billion plus dollar investment to the best of my knowledge they would be spjmr's first unicorn so these are the two folks we wish to recognize today right <laughs> let me introduce the first winner i have also gotten to know this gentleman during my 2 years here because he is on the board of spjmr and is a mentor and advisor to me as a member of the governing council mr rajesh jajurekar 1989 is the executive director of mahindra and mahindra limited rajesh has had an extraordinary career and through that particular career joining voltus working with marico for a little bit working with z entertainment rajesh has had an opportunity to leave his thumbprint on many many enterprises but none more so than mahindra and mahindra rajesh just recently had surgery and is unable to join us in person today but he was gracious enough to uh, record a fireside chat with me this afternoon and as proof that it was in fact this afternoon you please do look at the clothes that i have on <laughs> and the clothes that you will see on uh, the video screen so if we could play that video screen rajesh has a few words for you that i think you will find useful thank you Hi Rajesh, congratulations on the uh, the record, the recognition, and the award today. Varun, Varun, thanks so much. And sorry, I couldn't be there in person. And you know, this is I guess part of learning in life. I had like a lipoma surgery on Saturday, and I had assumed I'll get back to work on Monday. And <laughs> you know, we tend to sometimes be over optimistic on recoveries, and this hasn't been as easy as I thought. So I'm. Sorry, we have to do this on Zoom and not in person with you and the amazing students that we have in the alumni as well. So, but I'm glad we were able to connect on video at least. Like, like, likewise, Rajesh. Optimism is a good thing, even if it's displaced sometimes, like in the case of personal health, right? Uh, so, Rajesh, you know, you've had a remarkable and an extremely uh, impactful career. Uh, just wanted you to reflect a little bit on uh, how did your experiences at SPJMR early on. you know when you were a young man uh, shape you as you began your career i i think one of the strengths of spjmr from the time when i was there which is a really long time back uh, and i see that even today 
uh, is bringing in a humility uh, and a grounding and keeping your feet on the ground kind of mindset uh, to students from the days when you were in college. Uh, at least we didn't come out with any chip on our shoulder. It may have been a bit of the reverse. We came out feeling very hungry and wanting to prove our worth. And I think that matters a lot. Uh, you know, at least I have learned that success is less about how well you've done in academics and how many frameworks you knew, but about creating frameworks which are relevant to a situation and simple for people to understand. So, you know, the ability to be grounded, connected, and interacting with a lot of uh, faculty, which was, you know, professionally active in the sense of working in industry made a lot of difference. So, so Rajesh, certainly some of those uh, traits of humility and hunger, as you said, uh, and the ability to sort of treat a situation on its merits, probably stood you in good stead, even as you advanced, uh, you know, up, up in your career. But now if you reflect additionally on sort of new learnings that you had, you know, as you advanced in your career, um, things you learned, sort of defining moments, you know, if you could share some of those with our audience today, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, I think the one additional, uh, you know, interface I want to add on SPJMR has been I started teaching at SPJMR very early in my career. It was 1994, so maybe I was out of campus seven, eight years. And that's when I started taking courses at SPJMR. And I think that made a huge difference because we underestimate uh, how much we learn when we teach. Uh, you know, the amount of work that you have to do uh, to understand new things and be prepared for students who are going to be challenging you all the time. Uh, I think that was a key part of learning. So it's, you know, widening perspectives, uh, improving articulation, being ready to answer on the go. Uh, so all of this at that young age made a, made a very big difference. So that was, I think, uh, you know, it's not just the two years at the MBA, but the association with SPGMR post uh, 1994, I think, has been very meaningful for me. So that, I would say, is one defining moment. Uh, the other, you know, post-campus, uh, getting into a job where you get into a leadership role early. Uh, I was, uh, I got my first job at 22. Uh, that's when I passed out of campus. And by 23, you know, I was uh, leading a sales uh, branch in Gauhati for Northeast at that time in Coltus. And I had 22 people reporting to me at that age when I was 23. Uh, so, you know, th th these are things that I find, uh, you know, youngsters today struggle with wanting to take that up, uh, maybe not assigning enough importance to taking on leadership roles early in your career. And then it becomes too late as you move up the organization, however brilliant you are. If you haven't learned to influence and uh, lead people, uh, then you're not really preparing yourself enough for leadership roles uh, late in your career. So you may be the brightest person, but if you can't convince people, carry people along your with your ideas, uh, then that all of that brilliance is of little use because nobody's going to adapt it. Right. So, you know, let me pick on one thing that you mentioned, Rajesh, which is the use of the word influence. As you said, you know, learning how to influence and lead people. Now, not all of our students or attendees today might be as fortunate as you are in terms of having a, a reasonable size team to lead at the age of 23 or 24. Uh, you know, their first leadership assignment where people actually report to them might in fact come a little bit later. But the other word you use, influence, is something that is available to all of us. You know, it doesn't matter where we are in our careers, it doesn't matter what our you know, official status or rank is, we all have the ability to influence. So can you share some thoughts a little bit on influencing, because certainly in addition to the leadership roles you've had, you've probably had to influence your fellow leaders within the Mahindra group, for example. Uh, some thoughts on, you know, what are some good ways of influencing people, even when you don't have authority? Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, I spent many years in brand marketing and you don't have large teams uh, with you after that. So for a very long part of my career, till maybe 2003, I didn't have more than 20, 25 people because I didn't then move up the sales organization and moved into marketing. And in marketing, you have small teams. So you are basically influencing people all the time without having the authority, authority to do so. Uh, 
I, I just want to emphasize that, you know, it's about influencing people who are different than you and in different kinds of roles. And that's what one has to focus on learning. If you have to influence someone who has the same intellectual mindset as you, it's sometimes easy because you can, you know, easily establish a bond or a chemistry. But for pe influencing people who are not in the same space as you, how do you build the rapport very quickly and make the connections? I think that that needs a little bit of an bringing out the emotions in you. That's not easy mm -hmm. for a lot of us. But it comes with time, with practice, and building relationships to allow you to get uh, influencing. I mean, also, listening to the other person's point of view. I think this came to me much later in my life and career, which is you know picking on the other person's idea and building on it rather than getting stuck on your idea and say, okay, this is my idea and this is the way it's going to go. Uh, you kind of take the other person's idea and start co-creating and evolving on it. And that I think works very, very well when you're then going to sing. Okay, that makes, makes, makes sense, Rajesh. Uh, you know, before we conclude, you know, there's one other uh, question I wanted to ask you, which is about continuous learning and continuous evolution. You know, none of us is a finished product ever. You know, every day we get up, we learn something new about ourselves. We hope we are ending the day a better person, a better leader, a better manager, a better uh, spouse, father, whatever, than we were at the start of the day. Uh, how have you managed to continue to evolve uh, on a very strong foundation that you laid out for us already? But clearly that's not enough. So, you know, will you share with us how you continue to evolve and become the best version of yourself every day? Uh, so, I, uh, Varun, that's a great question and two, three different things that I tend to do. One is uh, uh, try and uh, just extending the stakeholder point, connect with different stakeholders as much all the time, which means dealers, customers, uh, suppliers now in my role, uh, because there's so much to learn out of interacting with them that you would otherwise never get through your chain of command or chain organization hierarchy or you know your teams because the you know is diluted by the time it comes to you so that's kind of seeing how you and i call this sensing i talk to a lot of people you know when my advice to them is how do you build the competence of sensing because as you move up leadership roles what you really need is the ability to sense uh, pick up information from different sources and know which to act on and build the judgment on what to ignore and what to work on. Uh, so I think that's one thing that I do to keep learning. The other one which, which I've practiced a lot of is reading different types of things, non-business. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, opens up your mind and helps you connect dots. Uh, so just open your mind to other other streams of uh, reading. Uh, teaching, teaching for a long time was, you know, a great way for me to rejuvenate myself and learn uh, new things. So I still like to, if I get an opportunity to do a program uh, in in company, I like to do it uh, because it. I always believe it helps me uh, prepare well, and you know, I put a lot of effort behind presentations that I make or communication because it's not just about what you're showcasing about yourself, but you're learning as you're preparing. So, so thank you, Rajesh. One last uh, piece of advice I want to solicit from you. Uh, you know, certainly building a successful career, which you have demonstrated, uh, is an important thing. But on the other hand, I think there's another thing that's more important than a successful career, which is that of happiness uh, and being a good person. Um, so any, any, any thoughts on that for our participants, you know, to be happier people and to be better people, and yeah, the career would follow. You know, uh, it's very easy to say this at my stage in life and my age in life, but I, I think I got this realization maybe eight, 10 years back. So I don't think that's not too late. I wish I got it earlier. But uh, this thing of counting what level I should be at what age, I just wish no one has to go through that. Because we work for 40 years of our life and, you know, that one year I didn't get promoted or the one year I didn't get this role, it really doesn't matter in the 40 years that you have. Uh, and, you know, I was obsessed about that early in my year that, you know, at this age I have to be whatever, either group product manager or a regional head and at this age, whatever and so on. So, and many of that got accomplished, but, uh, you know, then when you go back and you say you, you become so obsessed with the outcome that you don't enjoy the journey. And, you know, uh, over the last 10 years, I really enjoy the journey and I really don't 
not obsessed about either the business outcome or a personal outcome. So uh, that's not easy to do. Uh, easy to It's easy to say, but not easy to do. But for those who can do it, I think that's the most valuable thing you can get to learn. Well, you know, uh, th thank you for that, Rajesh. You were modest about one thing, you know, when I asked you about happiness, I think you certainly said not obsessing about sort of the results, you know, frequently is, is one way towards uh, happiness. Then the journey becomes more interesting. On the good person part, I do want to sort of personally thank you for being a generous contributor to many, many good causes, non-profit causes, including our own very own uh, Abhilde. So I think, you know, I, I know you're too modest to mention that, but we do appreciate that as well. Uh, overall, Rajesh, thank you for uh, taking the time to share with our audience today, you know, your, your journey. Thank you again for being, you know, one of our most distinguished uh, uh, alumni. And I, of course, personally thank you for your mentorship for the Governing Council. You continue to steer SPJMR's direction um, from a governance perspective and a strategy perspective today. And for that, uh, I thank you. So get well soon. I hope to see Thanks. you soon in person. Thanks again, Varun, and humbled by the recognition. Thank you so much. No, I know you can't hear us, Rajesh, but thank you again. And another round of applause for him, please. You know.